Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1972. We're going to be taking a look at Don McLean and he's going to be performing American Pie. And I'm not sure about the copyrights on this one. Hopefully we'll be able to watch it the whole way through. It is just over nine minutes of this video. So fingers crossed, but if not, I'll re-edit it and leave out the performance and give you guys a link in the description below and also pin it to the top of the comments. But let's get Don up on screen and see how he gets on. Long, long time ago, I can still remember how that music used to make me smile. And I knew if I had my chance that I could make those people dance that maybe they'd be happy for a while But February made me shiver With every paper i deliver Bad news on the doorstep I couldn't take one more step I can't remember if I cried when I read about his widowed bride but something touched me deep inside the day The music died So bye bye Miss American Pie Drove my Chevy to the levee But the levee was dry Them good old boys are drinking whiskey and rye And singing this'll be the day that I mortal soul and can you teach me how to dance real slow well I know that you're in love with him cause I saw you dancing in the gym you both kicked off your shoes man I dig those rhythm and blues I was a lonely teenage rock and buck with a pink carnation and a pickup truck but I The birds flew off with a fallout shelter Eight miles high and falling fast and Landed foul on the grass The players tried for a forward pass With the jester on the sidelines in a cast I'm just going to jump in here 
because we have so much going on in this performance, but such an iconic song. And it's something that did hit a chord with everybody when it was released in 1971 due to the subject matter and the death of Buddy Holly. And the video that I have on Buddy Holly, you can check that out if you want to. This performance, it's one of those that is eight and a half minutes long around that kind of time for the original. And generally in the industry, as you all know, they were always aiming for shorter songs because those were played on the radio. Whereas you've got a guy like Don who comes along and just writes it how it is and will just perform it as it is and isn't conforming to anything. And that's exactly what great singer songwriters do. Just referring back to that crash because it is now known as the day the music died. And that is due to this composition. And it really does show you how closely associated that event and this composition were viewed by the public where Buddy Holly, JP Richardson and Richie Valens tragically lost their lives. This song just brought everybody together at a time Time where everyone would have been mourning and Don especially having written this song because he would have felt that way as well so it's that group mentality of everybody supporting each other and remembering when singing this song obviously having great melody in there is going to help but just people linking arms getting together I know that the song isn't just specifically about that one event there are other places that we visit on this journey lyrically and Don does mention other artists around at the time and previously referring to some artists nicknames so the lyrical content is relatable as well because people know who Don's talking about getting into this live performance of the song obviously it's just Don and an acoustic guitar so there is no Nowhere to hide with his playing but also vocally on the original track there was the piano and then we do have the drum kit that then comes in but most importantly it is set up with this freeform nature that means Don can start out slowly and it is that full journey that we go on. We've got a beginning, a middle and an end here. And we've got it with this live performance, but also with that original recording because we start out really slow, really freeform with Don's delivery vocally, but also the way that he's playing the guitar because we're not just in a standard 4-4 tempo here at, you know, 60 beats per minute or something just continually going on and being predictable. Is something that Don can change the ebb and flow as and when he sees fit, which is exactly what you need telling a story. And that's what you get when you're listening to somebody tell you a story, even not musically, just from a book. They're not going to be talking at a set tempo. So this is why we get this storytelling quality from Don and this song is because it ebbs and flows. It isn't one consistent speed the whole time. The other thing to look out for in this performance is the way that Don delivers his vocal dynamically just by almost whispering in parts, but then leaning into the sound, getting more chord closure with his vocal cords. The other thing to bring up is that Dom doesn't have a wide vibrato on his voice. He doesn't use that technique a lot. It is in there, but it's really subtle. So it means that when Don is singing, he does hit a lot of clean notes and straight notes with no vibrato. So it means that he's got to be hitting these pitches dead on. If you start singing straight notes consistently and you're not on pitch the whole time, it's going to start wearing out the ears of the audience because there's nothing worse than somebody being slightly out all the time. So it's the hardest way to sing is straight. Sometimes when a singer is using a wider vibrato and has control of that vibrato, the note that they're aiming for, the pitch, is within that. And I've mentioned it on this channel before. When you're hitting a note straight between the eyes without that vibrato, you can't throw caution to the wind like you can when you know that you're getting near the note, but the vibrato will encapsulate it and it's not dead on pitch. So Don, throughout this whole live performance, is hitting these pitches dead on. Another thing about not having such a dramatic vibrato on Don's voice, it might be in there, but very subtly, 
it means that you really accentuate the storytelling quality in the vocal because when we talk and we tell each other stories day to day, we don't use vibrato in our talking voices. So the great singer songwriters had this ability to hit pitches so dead on that it didn't matter that there wasn't that vibrato technique in there, which is mostly used to get a note to sing, to sound pleasant to the ear. Whereas when you want to focus on the lyrical content and the story, sometimes not having vibrato on the voice can really emphasize what you're talking about because it has that talking quality to it. Just a quick word on the guitar technique here as well, because playing and singing at the same time, I always say doubles the difficulty, but Don has so much technique in there that will fly under the radar in this performance, especially because the guitar is quite low in the mix. But in the intro, there are tiny little things that Don does, such as playing his D7 sus4 chord shape and applying a little pull off with a little finger down to the open E string and then fretting with his little finger on the D of the B string and that'll be found on the third fret and just applying a little bit of vibrato on there. It's just a split second but it gives you an indication as to his ability playing wise because getting to the point of getting notes to sing, playing lead notes is totally different to just strumming out chords and there's so much that Don does here with hammer-ons, pull-offs, the changing of chords, but also these little sus4 tricks, hammer-ons, pull-offs to open strings that are impressive, especially when you factor in that he's singing at the same time. But let's get back into the performance and we'll watch it all the way to the end. Now the halftime air was sweet perfume while the sergeants played a marching tune. We all got up to dance. Lovers cried and the poets dreamed, but not a word was spoken. The church bells all were broken, and the three men I admire most, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, why they caught the last train for the coast the day the music died. 
And they were singing Bye Bye Miss American Pie I drove my Chevy to the levee But the levee was dry And them good old boys Are drinking whiskey and rye And singing this will be the day that I die And there we have it. What an engaging performance. And just looking at everybody in the crowd here, getting involved, also singing the chorus is something that you rarely see where the crowd are singing the main line that the artist would be singing, but then the artist up on stage is harmonizing with that main vocal of the crowd. The other thing that we've got here is this dynamic journey throughout because we started in such a quiet, soft place. Again, the ebb and flow being really slow tempo wise and then picking up in the middle. And then at the end, again, everything brought right back down to the point where the audience, when they start singing along, are singing along with the same respect to the dynamic change because Don is almost whispering into the microphone and all of the audience are whispering the vocal as well. So it just goes to show the level of connection that Don had with this performance that when everyone wanted to sing along with the chorus, they didn't come all in. They came in with the appreciation of dynamics that Don had already given them previously. And then at the end, we're at a slower tempo, but again, we're just climbing this mountain to the point where Don is going to be all in for this last chorus, but just at a slower tempo, therefore making the very last chorus even more dramatic because at no point have we been so all in dynamically, but with a slow tempo like the intro. So it's just adding those two elements together to hear something that we haven't heard before right at the end of the song to take you right back up to that peak of the mountain. With the guitar technique, as soon as we're all in dynamically, Don is now starting to emphasize beat two and four of the bar with a muted strumming technique. And it's something that I've demonstrated in other videos before this, but it keeps the whole composition going forward and driving. It's really taking the place of a drummer because the snare comes in on two and four, generally in a four, four beat pattern. Also, there's a little run at six minutes and 36 seconds, which isn't massively technical, but it just makes the difference. It puts an extra little shine on the guitar part that isn't just strumming out chords. It's been so well arranged by Don. Vocally, I always mention about having a range where if you can take your beginning vocal and then maybe your chorus vocal up an octave, the chorus is gonna be so much more dramatic. We have that here with Don in places singing around G3 and maybe even lower than that, but then then taking it all the way up to B4. And when we're talking about B4 as a note vocally, we're just a semitone off high C. And that's a note that I mentioned quite a lot on this channel, seen as the holy grail of classical singing with the tenor range. Hitting that high C in chest voice, which Don is doing here, by the way, he's not going into falsetto. So he's got an impressive range to his voice. And that's why he can get such a dramatic impact with his vocal lines. And especially when it's put into a song like this, that means so much lyrically, but also it is so strong melodically. There are songs out there that you will know you don't like to sing along with, but they're so strong melodically, you'll be walking around and you'll be singing a song that actually you're not a big fan of. 
And this is not one of those songs, but it is one of those songs from a melodic standpoint. It is so strong in the chorus. It's actually just reminded me of a great example of this last weekend where Tyson Fury was fighting Deontay Wilder and he won and at the end he sang this song and everyone got involved with it. So you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of people all singing this song And the other thing about the melody in this chorus is how simple it is. There aren't loads of trills or vocal gymnastics going on. It is just solid melody. Just when mentioning vocal gymnastics, Don does have flexible vocal cords because he can end a vocal phrase with a throwaway line of maybe two or three notes. And it's a stylization that you do get a lot in folk music, but Don throws it in there so tastefully it's not overdone. And it just gives a melodic end to a line that isn't the same as just holding a note or holding a note and adding vibrato. So stylistically, he has so many options that he can go to with his voice. So a fantastic performance here. And just to mention as well that writing songs, like I always say, is the hardest bit about the music industry. And being an artist, obviously Don is an expert in that field. He was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2004. And the notes and everything that he made to writing this song and the meaning behind it was sold in 2015 for $1.2 million. So when you've got that amount of interest in the meaning behind a song, it really does show the depth of the writing and how much people were interested in every single lyric and what it meant in this composition. But thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!